Hey, welcome back. We're at 1 Samuel chapter 19 now, verses 1 to 7. Let's read it, then we'll think about it together. Now Saul spoke to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted greatly in David. So Jonathan told David, saying, My father Saul seeks to kill you. Therefore, please be on your guard until morning and stay in a secret place and hide. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are, and I will speak with my father about you. Then what I observe, I will tell you. Thus Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul his father and said to him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he has not sinned against you, and because his works have been very good toward you. For he took his life in his hands and killed the Philistine, and the Lord brought about a great deliverance for all Israel. You saw it and rejoiced. Why then will you sin against innocent blood to kill David without a cause? So Saul heeded the voice of Jonathan, and Saul swore, as the Lord lives, he shall not be killed. Then Jonathan called David, and Jonathan told him all these things. So Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as in times past. Well, now Saul is just speaking outright. We're going to kill David. We need to kill him. He's a problem. We can't We can't allow this to go on. Saul, as we said, is kind of zeroed in on David. And without the big picture, without the big picture there, Saul narrows to the political and Saul's concerned about David becoming king and taking, you know, taking him away from being king. And so he's zeroed in on David. He's going to kill him if he could. But Jonathan is David's defender. And we can be very thankful for the friendship that Jonathan has with David. Jonathan sees David in his true potential. And Jonathan appeals to Saul. And notice how his appeal. Think of the good things. Think of the bigger issues. Don't think narrowly. Don't think in this little box. God has done mighty things. Verse 5, right? The Lord brought about a great deliverance for all Israel. It doesn't say for Saul. Dad, remember, Saul, remember, this wasn't for you. This was for all Israel. God has done a mighty thing for all Israel, and he's never done anything harmful to you. Not a thing. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong here. Why would you sin against innocent blood? Then we have Saul's, uh, Saul's promise, another promise. Didn't he promise... Was it, am I remembering right? Was Merab going promised to be David's wife? Be back, go back just a few verses. And he reneged on that promise. Now he says what? Uh, oh, I, as I, I swear on the Lord, I will not kill David. Well, we'll see how long this promise lasts, sadly, too. But there's an intervention, and then there's kind of a reconciliation. And there's David and Saul and Jonathan all together again around the table and so on. What do you do with somebody who so changeable. I appreciate David that he's giving Saul yet another opportunity. He's trying to be in tune. Good for David, and I pray good for us if we can just learn the same kind of lesson. It's not going to work out that way if you know the rest of the story, but at least David is trying, and Jonathan is trying to bring peace. Jonathan is seeking to be a peacemaker, but he's he's caught between a man who can't see the big picture and David, who is innocent, viewed as a problem by his father. Big problems there. But there's no reason for Saul. Saul really doesn't have anything on David at all. Let's pray. Father in heaven, sometimes we will be falsely accused, we'll be viewed as being a problem, viewed as being a bad guy. I know that uh, I've experienced this. I know others have experienced this. Even though we've never had an ill intention, perhaps towards some of our leaders or over some issue in the church, some have perceived us as troublemakers. Help us, Lord, though, to, uh, to try to be in a peaceful relation. Help us to be forgiving and willing. Help us to, when we have somebody like Jonathan who's willing to intervene for us, help us to try to work together with the brethren always, Lord. Thank you that we could do that. Thank you that with, with humans, we know it's not possible, but we know that with you, it is possible. And so be our helper in this, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So when things begin to get political in the church, that means something's gone, gone very wrong. But may God be our helper, and he'll be your helper, and he'll be my helper, and he will have a place for us in his work if we are faithful, even if we've been falsely accused or mistreated in some which way. We can trust in the Lord. God be with you.